Uh, speaking of trivia questions, who is the only gangster in Illinois that has a museum dedicated to him? Buster. Nope. No, uh, Jesse James. He's from Missouri. No. Jesse James. He's Missouri. Al Capone does not have his own museum, no. Burger King? Charlie Burger. Very good. In Benton, Illinois. What's the only southern Illinois town named after a U.S. Senator who killed somebody in a duel at East St. Louis? Ben? Ben? How'd you know that? I knew the guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's older than me. Did you vote for Lincoln? <laughs> Did you want to no, he's different. He was from the gold standard. Old Bullion, I think, was his yeah, name. Bullion, not. How about that? That's, that's pretty good. Uh, and did you know Abe Lincoln participated in a duel here in Alton? I think it was West Alton. I've been to West Alton. Uh, does anybody know? Is there still a Church of God in S West Alton? West Alton's actually in Missouri, right? Yeah. I went there as a, I, I grew up in East St. Louis in a church. We were Church of God. There's a Church of God in Meadowbrook. Well, let's talk about Buster Wortman. How many of you know who Buster Wortman is? Ooh, he's relatively unknown, huh? Well, I had touched a little bit on Buster Wortman and a lot of the other books I did. So I ended up doing a whole book devoted to him when his son called me up. And his son called me up and said, I hear you collect memorabilia for my dad. I said, well, all I have is his tie. Uh, so anyway, he said, would you like to buy my dad's bedroom outfit? I said, you bet. Is there a story you Now, normally this wouldn't be such a big deal. But Buster Wortman, after he was in power for about 10 years, in East Collinsville, built a house, huge brick house, with a moat around it. And it's not like the moat that you see in the movies, that's 20 feet wide. It's actually a big lake. And this was very infamous. Can you imagine a gangster with a moat around his house, with one little access bridge? Here's the Buster Workman book, uh, number one seller at Barnes & Noble, St. Clair Square. For about 25 years, Southern Illinois was ruled by a gang called the Shelton Brothers. They're going back to about 1920. With a little bit of an interruption from Charlie Burger. He was their main opposition and they got into gun battles and what have you. But Charlie Berger went a little bit too far, killed the mayor of West City, down nearby, uh, down by Benton, I guess, a little small town. And Charlie Berger was hanged in 1928, the last man to be publicly hanged in the state of Illinois. After that, the electric chair came in. Buster Wortman was born in St. Louis, we think. Grew up there as a kid. His parents divorced. He was raised by his grandparents. In an early age, he sold newspapers. Probably did like I did. Took a little wagon around looking for soda bottles. You turned a soda bottle in to the store, how much did they give you? Two cents. Two cents. If you found a milk bottle, how much? Nickel. Milk bottles were a nickel. From Alton all the way down to Cairo, you have the Shelton brothers, three of them. And Buster Wortman 
from the time that he was an older teenager, started working for them. <clears throat> Around 1932, just before Prohibition ended, he was guarding a still on the outskirts of Collinsville. I would guess that would mean somewhere down by the racetrack. And it was raided by the feds. He got into a fight with the feds, seriously injured one of them, and he, his buddy, he and his buddy got 10 years at Leavenworth. Contrary to Paul, what Paul Simon says in his books, that Buster Wortman served time in Alcatraz, not true. His buddy eventually got sent to Alcatraz. Alcatraz wasn't open yet, but after he was there a couple years, they opened it, and his buddy, his buddy, Blackie Arms, must have been a bad actor because he got sent to Alcatraz and Buster didn't. So Buster must have behaved himself. He got out early, got out around 1941, and by then, the Sheltons had been run out of the area by a real tough sheriff up in Belleville. So East St. Louis was just wide open. And Buster said, aha, but guess what? The big source of income, booze, it's legal now. So how do you become a gangster and make a lot of money? Well, let's see. Loan sharking. Kind of like MasterCard? <laughs> What's MasterCard? 21%? That's loan sharking, isn't it? I mean, we ought, to, we ought to make a put right on that MasterCard. Caution. This is loan sharking. As um, far as I can tell, Buster, he made loans, but they were just a little bit over what the bank interest was. He knew that if you got into loan sharking, people hated you, and he didn't want to be hated. He was fairly well liked. When I did my book, a lot of people <laughs> said, I'm not talking to you, Bill News. Why not? Look, I'm a decent guy. And they said, because you're going to say bad things about him. I lived next door to him. He was a great guy. So a lot of people in East St. Louis feel that Buster Wortman took care of the petty crime, the riffraff, the ones who fell through the cracks. He ran them out of town. Or maybe they ended up in a trunk over in Eagle Park in Madison. You never let them be found in East St. Louis. That'd be giving East St. Louis a bad name. So you dumped him at Eco Park in Madison, over by the racetrack, the car racetrack this time. Um, so Buster got into labor racketeering. He got into cigarette vending machines, uh, jukebox vending machines, or playing machines, bowling machines. Uh, he got a certain percentage of most gambling that went on, unless it was just a friendly poker game in somebody's house. But if it was serious gambling, he got a take. Now, when he was in prison, he had expected the Shelton brothers to take care of him. Well, I don't know why. He was such a low-level person, they just forgot about him. So he got mad at the Shelton brothers, and when he gets out of prison, he contacts the outfit, not Al Capone. Al Capone was out of prison, but he's a little screwy in the head because he's got third stage syphilis. And he's down fishing in his estate in Palm Island in Florida. But the outfit is still going. Joe Batters, Sam Giancana, those guys. And Workman says, I'll throw in my lot with you Maybe I can even help get rid of the Shelton brothers. And all three Shelton brothers were eventually shot to death and murdered. If I had to bet on it, I would bet that Buster Wortman had something to do with it. There's no proof of that. The murders were never found. But all three Shelton brothers, one at a time, got shot and killed. The lone surviving Shelton brother Big Earl, the one who was supposed to be the dumbest, he left, went to Florida, got his real estate license, 
lived in, lived until his 90s. And he was supposed to be the dumbest one. Uh, Buster also got into the numbers racket, what they call policy. I remember as a kid, some guy in a nice suit would come knocking on our door, and mom would give him a quarter every week. Now, I know what you're thinking, but you're wrong. And I said, Mom, what's a quarter for? Why does the guy collect a quarter every week from you? You're thinking numbers racket, right? No. He was collecting for an insurance policy. They sold some insurance policies where a guy like me, just like this, would come knocking at the door and, and collect for a nickel a week policy. That's how life was back in the old days. A nickel a week. The reason they called the numbers racket the policy is that the guy selling the numbers was stopped by someone in authority and he said, what are you doing here, man? <coughs> oh, I'm just collecting for an insurance policy. So that's why the numbers racket was also called policy. How many of you have ever heard it referred to as policy before? Two people. Put a little check mark, say, boy, look what I learned from Bill Newsom. <laughs> racetrack? No. Why can't you make money off the racetrack? Because racetrack, that's all authorized by the state of Illinois. They send people down to count the turnstiles. They want to make sure they get their right cut. So, no, the state of Illinois collects that not the gangsters. However, horse racing is important because how are you going to determine in the numbers racket what number wins? Remember, people are only going to bet that money if they're pretty sure it's on the up and up. If they think it's crooked, they're not going to want to do it. So you very simply base the winning number on the total attendance each week at the racetrack. And the attendance is always published in the newspaper. So that's how it was done. Buster also got into racing wire services, betting on horses, running at uh, the aqueduct, Hialeah, <laughs> places like that. Um, and you know how you go to ballpark, scorecard, scorecard, get your scorecard here? Well, they have something like that at the racetrack uh, telling you how the horse has performed in the past, who the jockey is, how he's performed in the past. These people who bet horses think, well, this is going to give me an edge. Uh, I never saw Buster Warman. I lived in East St. Louis when he was there, but since I didn't go to taverns, didn't see him. Um, now, St. Louis had its games, but because Buster had gone to Chicago and allied himself with the mob, he was the man. So you might have had Tony Giordano in St. Louis. You might have had John Vitale in St. Louis. Workman was the man. When he died, Vitale and Giordano were pallbearers. So the people in East St. Louis had no reason to fear Buster Workman. The only people who had reason to fear Buster Workman is that they were in competition with him. Duh, talk about dumb. One of the more humorous instances about Buster Wortman is he got accidentally shot in the butt one day. He went down to Route 3 near Cahokia and he was trying to talk a tavern owner into taking his cigarette machines, jukeboxes, so on. And the tavern owner says, no, no, I, 
I've got a best friend that I deal with and I'm not switching. And they got into a little bit of an argument. And I don't know if they wrestled with the gun or what, but the gun went off and Buster got shot in the butt. And he was bleeding quite substantially. And they said, we can't get this bleeding to stop. So, so they sent somebody to the ladies' room. They got a couple of Kotex. Can you imagine anything more embarrassing for Buster Ortman? They took a couple, a couple of Kotex to stanch the bleeding. And instead of going directly to the hospital, he went all the way back to his motorhome, changed clothes, and then his buddies, gangster friends, drove him to the hospital, dropped him off, and took off. And when the police asked him what happened, he said, nothing. It was an accident. I shot myself. Don't worry about it. And he never took vengeance on that, on that, guy, that guy that shot him. It turned out that the accident was a lot more serious than they thought because it got stuck in his groin. No, I didn't forget to wear a sock today. Remember I said I had an operation. How much more time have I got? We're about up. All right. Uh, well, Buster died with his boots on. You would have thought that maybe he got bumped off somewhere. Uh, he was born in 1904, died in 68 from, guess what? My church was right. Too much drinking and smoking. You do not want me on your jury if you're suing the tobacco company yeah. for smoking. I knew when I was seven years old Smoking was bad for you. We called them coffin nails, cancer sticks. If I was smart enough at seven years old, everybody else should have been smart enough too. So you won't get a nickel if I'm on your jury. I'll just get a good book to read and I'll say, well, you guys can deliver all, deliberate all you want, but I've already got my mind made up. I will pay for your hospital bills, though, but you won't get any extra money besides that. Well, let me close with my favorite joke. He died at Alexian Brothers Hospital, by the way. And Alexian Brothers is famous for what famous movie? Exorcist. The Exorcist. <laughs>